question I'm going to say. When a cyanide react with SNCl to HCl, this is going to give the corresponding imine. Imine undergoes acid hydrolysis to give rise to an aldehyde. Now, this is called as Stephens reaction. Whatever naming reactions are there in the textbook, you must highlight those and study properly for the examination. I am going to say now one more naming reaction which is under reduction. I am drawing here a structure, try to identify which functional group I am, I would have written it here. I am giving the name also. I hope at least with the help of the name you would have identified this is acid chloride. When an acid chloride reacts with H2 in presence of barium sulfate and palladium, small amount of sulfur, what happens? This H and the Cl. Now, this part comes out, the byproduct as HCl. What is left? This H is getting attached to the carbon atom. So, I get here CH3, C double bond to H. I am getting the corresponding aldehyde. I have told you before, an acid on reduction gives an aldehyde, and aldehyde on further reduction will give a primary alcohol. Then I expect a primary alcohol to come, but here the reaction stops. So, what makes the reaction to stop in this? It is this sulfur. I am telling this is a naming reaction. Let me first write down what is the naming reaction. This is called as Rosenmann's reduction reaction. All the naming reactions are very important. You must always keep in mind. Two of them are going to be asked in the examination. I am just telling you once again. And an acid chloride reacts with hydrogen in presence of BSO4 palladium with small amount of sulfur. It gives the corresponding aldehyde. If it is asked in the examination, what is the role of sulfur in Rosenmann's reduction reaction, then you must write that sulfur do not allow the aldehyde to further get reduced to the primary alcohol. After oxidation, now let me give you a word problem. What problem do come into the examination? Now, let us suppose the question is, I am dictating the statement and I am going to convert the statement in the form of a flow chart. There is an organic compound A with the molecular formula C6H12O2. This on hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis gives an acid B and an alcohol C. This is given in the question. The alcohol C undergoes oxidation and gives B as well as C undergoes dehydration to give rise to propene. Identify A, B and C. So, you have to identify these. Whatever I have taught you till now, with the help of that, you should be able to do it. I am telling for this reaction, you must study the dehydration part, the oxidation reaction. Now, first let us start with, now from this you just see propene. We all know that the structure of propene is like this. This is propane. Propane on dehydration, propane I am getting it when an alcohol undergoes dehydration. That means this alcohol has to be a 3 carbon atom. If this is a 3 carbon atom alcohol, the remaining 3 carbon atom has to go to an acid. Then only this is going to become a 6 carbon atom. Now, what can be an A? Now, A compound has got 2 oxygen. Which are the functional groups which contains two oxygen atoms we have studied till now? Whatever is there in your syllabus, functional group, among that there are only two organic compounds which has got the functional group containing two oxygen atoms. One is carboxylic acid, another one is ester. Now, this compound is carboxylic acid or ester, or are only two functional groups where there are two oxygen atoms. This cannot be in carboxylic acid because this on this itself is giving an acid. And hence, this part A has to be a carboxylic. A part has to be an ester. Now, what ester? Ester we know, ester has got this functional group. Now, I have to see what how many carbon atom here and how many carbon atom here. Now, since there are totally 6 carbon atom, one atom I have removed. Now, I have to fit 
4 one side, 3 one side or 1 this side and the remaining 5 another side that part we do not know. Now, next let us try the uh, after this the next now a part we know that it is an ester. Next part the hint is from this the alcohol on dehydration giving me this. Now, this compound I can either get it from this as I have told you under the elimination as well as dehydration. This is going to give me this compound as well as this part is going to give me this compound. Both of them are alcohol, both this compound are going to give me this compound. Now, the question is among these two which alcohol is this? The hint is this part, this reverse reaction C on oxidation gives me an acid. When I drew the chart of oxidation, I told you primary alcohol in oxidation gives me an aldehyde, aldehyde to an acid. 2 degree alcohol is going to give me a ketone. So, this part alcohol is going to give rise to an acid and hence A part has to be this. It is not this. Remember in the chart, I have told you 2 degree alcohol on oxidation gives me a ketone. After ketone, that part will not be asked straight away. If from a ketone to an acid, I have to ask you, that has to be given separately. And so, this option is goes. So, this option is going. So, I am removing this part. And so, now the compound C is propan 1 all. I hope this part is clear to you. If this part is propan, 1 all, what is going to be B? 1 degree alcohol and oxidation gives me in carboxylic acid. So, 3 carbon atom carboxylic acid, propanoic acid, 1 carbon atom or second, third, satisfy the valency of carbon atom, I am getting this. Just combine these two, get A. And hence, the compound is, the, when I write down the ester, I have told you that, just remove the hydrogen part. If I just remove the hydrogen part, in place of hydrogen, just substitute the alkyl part. So, the compound goes as this part. I am start writing from a CH2, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. I hope this part is clear to everyone. There is a question in page number 378, question number 12.11. All must be able to solve this question. The base of that question is this one. Try to solve this. I have told you before what is an alpha carbon atom, beta carbon atom, gamma and delta. Now, here I have given you a question. Identify alpha hydrogen in. I have listed some four carbonyl compound. Now, first find out whether the compound contains alpha hydrogen or not. After that, I will go to some more reactions. Now, this is the functional group. So, both this is alpha as well as this is alpha because this is the functional group. What is an alpha hydrogen? Hydrogen atom attached to an alpha carbon atom. And this I can say that the first compound has got how many 3 plus 2, 5, 5 alpha hydrogen. Let us come to the next one. It is an aldehyde compound. This is the functional group. So, this becomes the alpha carbon, this goes as the beta. So, how many alpha hydrogens here? There are 2. And so, I am writing here 2 alpha hydrogens. I am coming to the next compound. This is the functional group. So, this carbon atom, so there is an alpha carbon atom, but there is no hydrogen attached to this. If I just remove the circle and if I just show the bond and you can see that each corner has got one one hydrogen. I am showing here the hydrogens, but when you come to this carbon atom, its valence is already satisfied 1, 2, 3, 4. So, there is no hydrogen. It contains an alpha carbon atom, but no alpha hydrogen here and so I am writing here no alpha hydrogen. Similarly, come to this compound formaldehyde IUPC name methanol. This is the functional group. There is a hydrogen, but there is no alpha carbon atom and hence in this case also I say as no alpha hydrogen. I am coming to a next naming reaction called as Canizaro reaction. I am telling Canizaro reaction is only meant for aldehydes, it is not meant for ketone. That too, what type of an aldehyde? Among this, I have written here, this is aldehyde, this is aldehyde, this is aldehyde. Among all this, I am telling it is meant for only those aldehydes which do not have alpha hydrogen. So, among B, C and D, I will see that it is only C and D which can give Canizaro reaction. So, naming reaction, a very important question on this, write short note on Canizaro's reaction. 
So I am telling only alde aldehydes which do not contain alpha hydrogen undergoes this reaction. So I am taking one as methanol, another one I am taking as benzaldehyde. Apart from this, there is no other examples. I am not writing the names. Now you must be familiar with the names. Only aldehydes which do not contain alpha hydrogen reacts with concentrated alkali, reacts with concentrated alkali to give a molecule of salt of carboxylic acid and a primary alcohol, one carbon atom aldehyde. So, one carbon atom primary alcohol is methanol. In this case, the salt of an acid one carbon atom attached to the ring. So, it has to be benzoic acid. I cannot get benzoic acid. I am going to get a salt of a benzoic acid. So, I am writing here as benzoate ion and here I am going to get as one carbon atom alcohol. It has to be a primary. So, benzyl alcohol. So, this one is benzyl alcohol. I am not writing the name for this. This all of you know methanol, methyl alcohol. This one is benzoic acid. Since H is not, it is a negative charge. It is a carboxylate ion, so this goes as benzoic part becomes benzoate. So, this is benzoate ion. This one is formate ion. If this is asked in the examination, how do you write? Aldehydes which do not contain alpha hydrogen reacts with concentrated alkali to give a molecule of salt of an acid and alcohol. What is happening is we are supposed to take two molecules. If I do not write here two, then also it is okay. So, among the two molecules, one of the molecule undergoes oxidation to give rise to salt of an acid, another molecule undergoes reduction to give a primary alcohol. I hope you remember 11th standard you have studied under the types of chemical reaction. A same substance which undergoes both oxidation as well as reduction simultaneously. That means, such type of reactions are called as disproportion reaction. Here the same substance is undergoing oxidation, the same substance is undergoing reduction. Oxidation, reduction and I can say in this cannabis reaction, I can say that this is an example of disproportion reaction. Disproportion term you will be using in inorganic chemistry many a time an important term disproportion reaction. I have told you just not cannabis reaction, a similar reaction involving those four I am just telling. I am going for the next one called as aldol condensation, another important reaction. In the previous one, the previous one means the previous reaction that is cannabis reaction, I told you carbonyl compound and that too carbonyl compound means only aldehydes because if you take any ketones it is bound to have an alpha hydrogen. Canizaros was meant without alpha hydrogen, so only for aldehydes. But when I come to aldol condensation, it can be both aldehyde as well as ketone. I am just telling you one of the reaction with an aldehyde, one of them I will also show you with the ketone. I have taken a ketone, I am taking acetone. There it was two molecules, here also two molecules. So, there I have told that only aldehydes reacting with concentrated alkali. Here I am telling aldehydes or ketones reacting with dilute alkali. So, dilute OH negative. I need not have to specify what is that whether it is NaOH or KOH if you want you can write, but this is generally done in presence of dilute alkali. Now, what is happening? It, both of the reactants are going to get condensed. When it is going to get condensed, and here I am telling that aldehydes or ketones having alpha hydrogen. It is not necessary that both the compounds should have an alpha hydrogen. I am telling when you draw the structure, whatever part you draw it here, this part must have alpha hydrogen. If there is no alpha hydrogen in this, it will do. At least one of them must have alpha hydrogen, that is the condition. Now, this carbonyl carbon is going to get attached with this alpha carbon atom and hence I am going to have the compound like this CH3. See, this part I am just drawing it like this. I am drawing here a wrong structure. I have just attached this carbon with C. 
Just see the valences here. This carbon's valence has become 5. It's wrong here. This carbon's valence is 5. 3, 4, 5. It's wrong here. What has to happen? The H part has to go to this oxygen. It is becoming like this actually. Okay. So, so from here a hydrogen has to go to this. So this part has to become OH. OH, so this part is going to become a single bond now. And since that hydrogen has gone to that oxygen atom, so this part becomes CH3. I am teaching you aldol. From this term, you can make out that there are two functional groups. Al has come from aldehyde, ALD has come from an aldehyde, all part has come from an alcohol. I have got an aldehyde group here, I have also got an OH part, alcohol part here. If I join these two, I have to join like this. Now you have understood? I have to join this carbon atom with this part. So this double bond O has to become OH. So one of the hydrogen from this will migrate to this part. So what? So how I am going to get the compound? The compound will be like this. I am telling this is an aldol, which is unstable. Later on, it gets stabilized. If aldehyde and OH is aldol, then a ketone and alcohol will be what? Can you make it a somewhat a rhyming word, aldol? So this goes as ketol, unstable. This is unstable. They get stabilized by eliminating a water molecule. Now which water molecule? From where the H and the OH is coming? The OH which is formed just now, the OH which is formed, OH to remove a water molecule, I need a hydrogen. From where the hydrogen is taking? The hyd there are so many hydrogens. Which hydrogen I have to take? The hydrogen which is towards the functional group. This is the functional group, so take this H. I am removing this H. Here, this OH and this H. And now just see what is the compound. I did not touch all this. So this is CH3. This is CH, you can keep it like this. It's not compulsory that you have to join the CH together. You find this is easier, you can go for this dash. Initially it was CH2, I have removed the hydrogen, so CH, this part as it is, CH. Here a double bond has to get established to satisfy the valency. This is stable compound. Similarly in this case, this is CH3, C, CH3 down. This C here initially it was CH2, so this is turned out to be CH now, so a double bond, single bond, double bond O, CH3. Now how do I know the compound is correct or not? As per the definition, as per the definition, aldol condensations are meant for either aldehydes or ketones. 